Thank you, Jesus. Well, we are going to continue today. We've been on this series, Those Who Honor. And, uh, you know, the Bible says, let's go to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. And we'll read the latter part of that verse. It's been our foundation scripture because he said in that verse, notice, them that honor me, I will honor. And those that despise me will be lightly esteemed. So we've been asking this question, who does God honor? And can that honor increase? Yes. And as the honor from me increases, the honor to me increases. And I made a statement last week that I want to repeat. Aren't you glad? You know, some of the things that we're saying, we got to chew on them a little bit. This is a very, has been a very introspective series. Anybody else besides me? Yes. But aren't you, glad God, aren't you glad God thinks we can handle a little meat? Yes. Now, I'm not saying that other things are, are, are elementary, but I'm saying when God begins to, to take us, and Pastor Michelle said something Wednesday when she ministered that really blessed me because uh, my wife is very, uh, very intellectual spiritually, and she hears from God on a very high level. But she's very low-key about it. She doesn't, uh, she doesn't have a big mouth like me. <laughs> and I'm more so when I'm anointed than, than I am any other time. But the point that I'm making is this. She made the statement. She said, she said, part of the light that we're walking in the year of favor and light is this series on honor. And you know, I, I had thought about that, but I hadn't really given it any thought as far as a deep amount of thought till she said that. And, and what's happening is that we're understanding the more we honor God, the more God will honor us. The more honor and reverence I give to His things, the more honor and reverence He gives to my things. I want what I'm doing to be important to God. That there are people that you know nothing that they're doing carries any weight with God. Nothing. I didn't say here, people in here. People that you know, nothing that they're doing carry weight, carries weight with God. Amen. Why? Because it doesn't bring honor to Him. I've been praying lately saying, Lord, teach me how to make our ministry more valuable to you. I want God to look at our ministry and, and understand this. I know that God's all powerful and He can do whatever He needs to do. But for the, for the sake of understanding my thought process, I want God to look at our ministry and say, boy, it'd be tough to do without them. Now people say, well, God would never think that. Well, I understand that you're thinking, but we're thinking my way now. Amen. You know, there are people in your life, aren't there people? How many have people in your life that you think, boy, if they weren't in my life, it sure would be a lot tougher? Anybody but me? I, I've, got, I've got staff members that I think, my goodness, you know, if, if they weren't around, you know, Ron is just my go-to guy. I mean, in, in, in the sense of, uh, you know, right now he's single. That's not going to be for very much longer. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's no, no, not really. Deborah, not really, if you're watching. Amen. But, uh, I'm, I mean, any time of the day or not, and I try to be, I try to be uh, uh, considerate, you know, but the thing is, I've never had him say no. Jim, I've never had him say no one, no one on my staff. But here's the point. There are people that you look at and you know in your life, you just think, man, it would be hard to do what I'm doing without them. What they do matters to you. Right? I want what we do to matter to God. We all want what we're doing to matter to God. Because he said, those that honor me, I will honor. Amen. Then Malachi 1, 6, he said, A son honors his father and a servant his master. Then he said this, if I be a father, where's my honor? And we made the statement over and over again that in this ministry, in this fellowship, these churches, 
that question will never be asked of us by God. Where's my honor? And I've encouraged you to make the decision that that'll never be asked in your family. Where's my honor? Amen. But you know, I've said this, I said this earlier about people that what, some people that what they're doing carries no weight with God. There are multitudes of people that God's asking them that question. Where's my honor? Where's my honor? Amen. You know, you know one of the things, and, and, and I can't stay on this too much because next week we're going to start on honor's reward. We've been, look, we've been looking at these, these things about steps to dishonor. And next week we'll hopefully get into honor's reward. But you know, when God appeared to Solomon, and it says that Solomon had went to Gibeah, Gibeah was a high place. Now remember, they didn't have a temple. So when it says a high place, he wasn't going and sacrificing to a, a false god. It was, it was a known place to go sacrifice to the Lord. And it says there, it says that he sacrificed a thousand bullocks to God. But when you read that in the Hebrew, it carries the act of repetition. So he had sacrificed a thousand bullocks to God repeatedly. And then that night, God appears to him. And he, oh, this blessed me. Because who does God honor? And God came to Solomon and asked him a question. Here's what he said. The New English translation says this. What do you want me to do for you? God is asking that question. I said, God is asking a man, what do you want me to do for you? You can't separate the two. You can't separate his honor for God and God's honor for him. And you know Solomon's answer. He said, well, I, you know, I'm just a youth. I don't know how to go in or come out. And I'm, I've been given this great people to govern. He said, I would like your wisdom. And God said, okay. And then he said this. He said, because you, number one, you've not asked for the life of your enemies. You've not asked for riches. He said, but you've asked for wisdom. He said, here's what's going to happen. Watch. Now, this is important. He said, you're going to get both riches and honor. You understand? So what does that mean? Riches are not necessarily honor. Honor is not necessarily riches. But he said, you're going to get both. Well, who does God honor? So if I want God's honor, I have to give God honor. And remember, honor is more than calling Jesus Lord. Honor is more than saying I'm a Christian. Honor is more than coming to church, although it's involved. Now notice here, let's start off today in John chapter 5 and verse 44. An increase... In honoring God and His things and His desires and His plans will result in God getting more involved in what we desire. You know, that's one of the scriptures that we quote. You know, He'll give you the desires of your heart. But what's that connected to? Honor. I have to be concerned about what God desires. Hallelujah. Do, do you understand that? I have to be concerned about what God desires. I have to be concerned. If I want my family to be blessed, I have to be concerned about what God desires in my home, what God desires in the life of my family. You know, there are people that, that uh, uh, will say things like this. They'll say, well, I really don't care what anybody thinks. That person will never be blessed. Because you can't act that way. Because if you'll say that about me, You'll say that about God. Oh, I would, I would never say I don't care what God thinks. There, listen, there are, there are multiplied millions, hundreds of millions of people today that don't care what God thinks. They could care less about what God thinks. And so God's not involved in their desires. I want God, say it out loud, I want God, I want God. Involved, involved in my desires. In my desires. So say this, say, Father, Father teach, me teach me how to honor you more. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. John chapter 5, verse 44. And remember that Jesus is dealing with the religious leaders of his day. And he makes this statement here that has so impacted me. He said, how can you believe which receive honor one of another? And notice this phrase. And seek not the honor that comes from God only. So he says, you're seeking the wrong honor. And then we also get the idea, there's an honor we're supposed to be seeking. And it's the honor that comes from God alone. The Weiss Bible says, and the praise which is from the presence of the only God you are not seeking. So we're to seek this honor, notice, that only comes from God. So there is an honor that only comes from God. That's what I'm supposed to be seeking. Amen. And when I start, and and, and here's the thing. When I start seeking that honor that only comes from God, God will show me how to honor Him more. God will show me how to honor His things more. Amen. We're to seek that honor That comes from God alone. You know, there are a lot of people that will spend a lot of time trying to impress people. Amen. See, when it gets quiet, I need to stay there. There's a lot of people that will spend a lot of time trying to impress people. And they'll go out and buy new clothes trying to impress somebody. Amen. They'll get a haircut. Get all ship shape to try to impress somebody who is limited in their ability to help them succeed. Amen. But then that same person will deal very trivially with the things of God. And really make a fuss to impress their boss and do very little to seek the honor that comes from God. Do you see that? Do you, do you know every time you refuse to get involved in things that are, that are wrong, if you want to say it that way, or immoral or sinful, and, and the world's doing it, and even some Christians that you know may be doing it, but every time you decide, I'm not doing that, you know what you're doing? Seeking the honor that only comes from God. Amen. I, I've seen a rash of this lately, and, I, and I'm, not, I'm not on a high horse, but I've seen a rash lately of preachers cussing. I don't understand that. I'm, I mean, my father raised me, and I, now some of y'all don't get mad at me. My father raised me with this. He told me one time, he said, son, he said, people that cuss are small-minded. And, you know, I'm just a little kid. I'm like, well, well, you know, why is that? And he said, they have a very limited vocabulary. They can't think of anything else to say but some dirty word. And cussing in itself is just dishonor. Have you ever been cussed out by somebody? I mean, they just gave you a good old cussing and called you everything in the book. You son of a bitch! And yeah, and you, Right? That's dishonor. But I've seen this rash of preachers cussing. I guess they think it's going to make them more socially cool. At the expense of honoring God. Oh, Pastor, all I said was hell. Why do you want to go around saying hell? You're not going there, are you? Amen. You know, I had a minister here one time cussed in the pulpit. And, and, and people, say, people say, well, it wasn't that big of a deal. You should have seen the emails I got that were from people that were confused about what's up with that. Let, let me ask you this. Did you cuss before you got saved? Yes. Yes. Amen. 
So you got saved and things changed. So, so that means the cusser is dead. Now I'm saying this for a reason. It doesn't honor God. You cannot ever get over where you're not emphasizing God's desires to try to be more socially acceptable. And you'll see, you'll see preachers making series out of television shows that I don't understand what business they have watching them. I don't watch enough secular TV to make a series off of one. I found out a long time ago I need to go to the Holy Ghost and get His series. Amen. And people say, well, are you against somebody? I'm not against anybody. I'm telling you something. That when you build something on the desires of people and you disregard what God desires, it's built on a, on a shaky, at best, foundation. Amen. How about this one? Beer and hymns. Who has a smartphone with you, real quick, that can Google something for me? Just Google the phrase, beer and hymns. <laughs> yeah, beer and hymns. And, and tell me how many pages you get. How many are there? I was online the other day and thought, I'll just, I'll just see. And I never ran out of pages. And I'm not an online guy. <laughs> beer and hymns. And you know what the drawing card is? Come to church. Free beer. And we'll sing the hymns of the church. I've never understood how you can stand with a pint of beer and sing just as I am. Or Amazing Grace. How about this one? Stand there with your beer. When I survey the wondrous cross upon which the King of glory died, all my gain I count but loss. How can you sing that? Doing something that the Bible implicitly says dishonors God. And I heard one of those preachers say this. He said, well, Jesus drank wine with hookers. No, he didn't. You cannot show me one scripture that says Jesus ever drank wine. It's not there. Now, Pastor, it's kind of old school. I know it's called honoring God. I want to honor his desires. It's, it's, do, do you see what I'm saying? I'm not seeking. Now that would make you very culturally, worldly culturally acceptable. I don't know if anybody uh, has watched Eagle Mountain International Church, but the Lord had uh, Pastor George really talk about this. That's not why I'm talking about it. This is something the Lord dealt with me about. But the Lord told him to tell all of those pastors. He said, you will be held responsible for every DUI. For every person that becomes an alcoholic because of your example. Amen. See, we want to honor God. We want to honor God. Well, you know, we're going to hold our Bible study in the pub our men's group in the bar so that we can attract more people. Who are you trying to attract? That's a good question. Amen. Amen. You know, the Bible never says that Jesus went to the bar. Right. And people say, well, yes, it did. No, it didn't. It says that Jesus was eating dinner and that the publicans and the, and the sinners came to him. They came to him. Why did they come to him? There was something honoring about him. There was something different about Jesus that said, this guy has the answer to the problem that I'm facing. And the religious people got mad and said, look, he's allowing those sinners to eat with him. And Jesus looked at him and said, it is the sick that need a physician, not the well. Do you see that? That dishonors God. That dishonors God. 
Well, Pastor, how much wine can I drink and be okay? Why are you asking? A person that asks that question wants to drink some wine. We are not called, oh Lord, help me. I knew, we, we are not called to see how close to the world we can live. The, the Bible still says you come out of them and be separate. What did it say? Be separate. Now, what, what, why is that so important? Because I'm different. I'm light. I, I don't, and, and I'm trying to move away from this. I, I'm trying to figure out how the church and the world that we live in can talk about blending in and being a part of culture. We've all, the church has always been countercultural. We've always been a burr under the saddle of the world. Jesus said the world is going to hate you. Because they hated me, he said. And, the, and here's what he said. This is the scripture a lot of people quote, but listen to the context he quoted it in. He said, they'll hate you because they hated me, and the disciple is not above his master. So they're going to look at you when you honor God and think you're a prude. I don't care. I got a good marriage. I got a good life. Amen. I, I put my head on my pillow every night knowing I've done everything I could do to honor God with my life today. That's got to, see, we're, we're desiring the honor that comes from God alone. Amen. Are, are you following me? Guys, I'm telling you, every time you make a decision to do something that honors your spouse, you're honoring God. Every time you make a decision to take a step to honor your spouse, you're doing something that honors God. Every, listen, everybody in the world might be doing things. We're not, we're not following the world. We're swimming against the current. We're going counterculture. Everything that we do is different to the world because the world just lives however they want and does whatever they want. We do what honors God. Amen. Do you see that? I remember one time having a, 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 a Christian tell me they had went and saw a movie. And they said, well, they only used the Lord's name twice. How many times are we going to sit and hear the words God and damn used in the same sentence, used together and be okay with it? I mean, that's, that's part of the, the system today. Yeah, that's cool to damn a thing. And it's not just damn it. I mean, you got to damn it with inflection. Damn. Right? How about this one? Whatever. No, it's not whatever. But the same people would look at us funny if we went, bless. Blessed. <laughs> I'm just trying to get you to see. You see how that dishonor's gone? Yeah. Amen. I'm seeking the honor that comes from God only. I've really been praying this lately. Lord, I don't want to be involved in anything that hurts you. I, I want to see what will happen if we really just honor you. And not, and not do things just to be prudish. And not do things just because it's against our denomination. But stop things that dishonor you and start doing things that do honor you. And he said, I seek that honor that comes from him alone. Amen. We don't, we don't have any more time 
for pulpits to be used for, for, for some kind of entertainment venue. Amen. We got to honor God. Oh, glory. I probably spent too long on that. But. You, you, you understand that? Because people say, what's wrong with this generation? I'll tell you what's wrong with the generation that we live in is they were largely raised by people who never learned anything about honor. Amen. And, and you can think what you want about what I'm going to say. That when those young men started standing on the, ste- on the steps of our Capitol and burning their draft card, they were dishonoring yes. everything yes. that we stand for. Yes. And, 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 they were, they were ra- and then they, they married and had children and taught them the dishonor. Well, I don't have to agree with everything in the government. Don't make me go to Romans chapter 13. Because it tells you very plainly that yes, you do not have to agree with everything that's going on in the government, but you have to walk in honor. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. And, and let me say something else about this. Christians, you've got to be careful about your gloating. I don't preach on social media and stuff like that because I don't do social media, and I'm not against anybody that does. I'm not against it. We use it in the ministry. I don't have it personally. Be careful about the way you say things on social media. The comments you make. Be careful about that. Why? It can can be very dishonoring. It it can be very prideful. Amen. I'm so glad we got rid of that other. Hey, hey, ho, 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 ho. That tells me something about what that Christian did while that other administration was in office. I promise you they didn't pray for them. Why? Because they're too quick to run their mouth about them. And you know what that is? Dishonor. Yeah, but God wasn't for them. Now, now wait a minute. Wait a minute. He said honor the office. Amen? Amen? Why? We're seeking the honor that comes from God only. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, notice Matthew chapter 7. Am I helping you with this? And you know, people will say things like, well, I'll tell you what, you're going to have to earn my respect. Show me that in the Bible. You know, every person in here that's my elder... I respect you and honor you because you're my elder. There there can be a person that's the rankest sinner in the world come in and my elder. I'm going to respect them because they're my elder. I'm not going to respect what they do, but I'm going to respect them. Why? That's what we're told to do in the Bible. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that a change of thinking? What did the Bible tell you to do to your father and mother? Do what? Honor. What's that? Honor. So that means you don't go around talking about how they failed you as a parent. You don't go around talking about where they missed it. Yeah, but my dad was never there for me. Well, but, but, but wait a minute. Where does the Bible say that you talk about that? It says you honor them because they brought you into the earth. Without your mama and daddy, you're not here. And you might be in here today and say, I didn't even know my dad or I didn't even know my mom. Yeah, but wherever they are and whoever they were, you honor them. Why? It will be well with you and your days will be long on the earth. What is that? Honor's reward. Who does God honor? Amen. Amen. Now, my parents aren't saved. He doesn't say honor them if they're saved. Yeah, but my mom blew it. Well, so have you. And we love you. Amen. See, all of us parents in here, you know, all of us young parents. 
All of us parents, if you still got kids at home, remember something. If you're perfect, you know, the Bible says that's the only person that can judge. You do know that, is the perfect person. So is there anybody here that would raise your hand and say, you never made a mistake where your kids were concerned? Thank you for being honorable people. So that means what do you do about the mistakes that were made for your mom and dad? You forgive them and you honor them. Why? Jesus said if you didn't, you were in danger of hellfire. That's what the master said. But we have multitudes. We have millions, maybe hundreds of millions of parents. That are just subsisting, just existing. And you got grown kids that can make life easier and they won't do anything about it. I've been asking the Lord lately, Lord, show me. Show me how I can make their life easier. Show me how I can do more for them. Well, I've tried to do for them and they don't appreciate it. Yeah, just when you were growing up, remember? Remember those cars they bought you? And they told you to change the oil and they, they told you how to take care of them and you didn't do it and you blew the engine and dad got mad at you and yelled at you but took the car down and got a new engine put in it? You remember those? Apple don't fall far from the tree. Yeah, but my dad left my mom or my mom left my dad. That's not the point. The point is honor. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, but my husband, my, blah, blah, blah. the point is honor. There are ladies in here that have unsaved husbands. And do you want me to tell you what part of the problem can be? Dishonor for that man. You treat him like he's a no good sinner. And that's dishonorable. Now, if, if he would get up every Sunday morning and put on a suit and put on a tie and come to church and act like everybody you see at church, then, well, then I would honor him. That's not where it starts. That's not where it starts. What Paul tell the believer to do that was married to an unbeliever? He said, live with them peaceably. And he said, then your witness would change them. Now, I know every situation is different, but I'm, I'm, I felt impressed with the Holy Spirit to say that. That's called honor. <coughs> Amen. Did you find Matthew chapter 7? <laughs> Verse 21, moving right along. And let's look at this. Uh, show me this in the Amplified Bible, please. I want to read verse 21 through verse 23. Notice this. Hallelujah. He says in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and driven out demons in your name and done many mighty works? In your name. Then I will say to them publicly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who act wickedly. Notice, disregarding my commands. Now, <laughs> as I was studying this, something that came across to me is there's different viewpoints on this scripture. And there are people that say, well, these people were never saved in the first place. There are people that say they were lying. There are people that, that say, well, these are people that lost their salvation. Well, let, let me say a couple things about that very quickly. Number one, number one, once you're saved, you're saved. I mean, you can't just lose your salvation. You've got to disregard it, walk away from it, whatever the case may be. Secondly, Jesus never said they lied. You see that? Jesus never said, no, you didn't do these things. Notice these phrases that are used here. 
Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, is that in the Bible? So not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom. Lord is a term of honor. Lord means master. It means sovereign. It means above all. It means in charge of all. It means over all. Sovereign God. So remember the people that came to Jesus and Jesus said, you know, you call me Lord and you draw near to me with your lips, but your heart's far from me. Why do you say to me, Lord, Lord, and then you don't do what I told you to do? Do you see that phrase? Not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's sobering for some, challenging for others, but yet it's, it's there in the Bible. Now there's a reason. He says, but he who does the will. Not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom, but he that does the will of my Father. Doing the will of my Father is honor. Doing what He wants me to do. And then He said, Depart from me, you who act wickedly. Now, in the King James, it says that work iniquity. The word iniquity is the Greek word anomia. It means lawlessness or lawless ones. And in the Greek, there is a continuous action denoted there. So he said, you that constantly practice lawlessness. You're constantly doing this. Do you remember there's a scripture in the Bible that says, To him that knoweth to do right and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Right? Uh, the book of Proverbs says this. It says, uh, him that is often reproved and stiffens his neck and hardens his heart, destruction will come suddenly and there'll be no remedy for it. These were not just people that did this one time. They repeatedly worked lawlessness. Amen. Notice he said, disregarding my commands. Now think about that for a moment. See, this is not legalism. As Jesus says, you act wickedly disregarding my commands. Remember, the, 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 uh, what we're talking about today is disrespect. We talked about familiarity last week and disregard the week before. Disregarding my commands. Dis, the prefix dis, means to move away from. Move away from the regard for what I've asked you to do. He says this was the problem. This was the issue. But yet, these people, notice, he said that they healed the sick and cast out demons. But yet, with their life, they constantly disregarded what God asked them to do. Now, why is that so important? Because to everybody on the outside, they looked right. But they were not honoring God with what they were doing. Now, now why is this important? Because, listen, they didn't, they did these things in Jesus' name. Jesus never said they didn't. But He said, I never knew you. That means I never approved of you. I never went along with the way you were doing things. That, this is important. Who does God honor? Those that have a regard for His commandments, a regard for what He's asking me to do. And, and these people were casting out demons and they were getting people healed, but yet they had no regard for what He was asking them to do. Now we see that in, in, in big ways in the world that we live in. I mean, meaning that everyone's aware of preachers that have made a big stumble and made a big, uh, a big failure. You know, and we see it. But listen, 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 listen. That's something that became public 
in a big way because of a big name. There are, there are people that you know that just disregard what God wants them to do. For instance, there, there are people that I know very close to me, people that I know, they know they ought to be in church. They know they ought to be living for God, but they just disregard it. Amen. Amen. And it's, it's consistent. The, what you do consistently becomes easier for you to do. Amen. And he said, I never approved of you. Because you constantly disregarded what I had to say. One of the greatest ways of showing respect and honor is a person doing what they were asked to do. And one of the greatest forms of disrespect is to knowingly disobey what's been asked of you. Amen. Now why is that so important? Because this is really going to happen. That there have already been people that have stood before the Lord and he's already said, I don't know you. That there's going to be people that stand before the Father. And he's going to say, you disregarded what I asked you to do. And just live life however you want. I never knew you. I never approved of you. And they're going to say, but I built a church for you. And I got people healed. And I cast out devils. And I raised money. And he's going to say, but I never approved of it. Not of it in the sense of what you did. I never approved of you. How many times have you heard people say things like this? Well, God's been dealing with me to do this. And God's been dealing with me. And God's been... Now, wait, now wait a minute. Are you starting to see the danger in that kind of statement? God should not have to deal with us for five years to get us to do something. Amen. Well, pastors, is it that, is it, is it that, is it that important? I don't know, you read the scripture and tell me. Is it that important? Do you remember the scripture in the Bible where Jesus said, the man that doesn't forgive his brother from the heart, the father can't forgive him? Remember that scripture? Did Jesus say that? Yes. That's, so that's in the Gospels. That's in red. So Jesus said that. How important you think forgiving your brother is? Very. Vital. This is, the, this, is, this is the reason some people are sick and won't ever get well. Because they constantly disregard what God told them to do. You, you can't do that. There are people you know and I know they're going to die. They're going to die sick. But then there's others, thank God, they got a hold of the Word. They're standing on the Word. They're believing God. And God's going to come through for them. Amen? I never approved of you. Now, Pastor, that seems a little hard. It's going to get easier. Hang on. <laughs> In a minute. Look here. Look here at... Look here at 1 Kings chapter 13. And I'm, I'm going to deal with this passage of Scripture. A lot of people, uh, 1 Kings chapter 13, we want to read verse 1. And then we'll skip to verse 8 and 9. Now, a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of ministers bypass this passage. But listen, there's nothing in the Bible that's difficult. It's simple. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Now remember, Jeroboam has led the nation of Israel into idolatry. All right, this is not a good altar that he's burning incense on. And God sent this man of God to cry out against Jeroboam. And he said, this is going to be the sign. And we're going to go to verse 8. We'll skip some of this, so I'm filling in the blanks. He said, the altar is going to burst and the ashes are going to come out of it. Well, it did. And the king pointed at him. And said, put him in prison. 
And he said, you know, your hand's going to wither up. And sure enough, it did. Now look over here at verse 8. And the man of God said to the king, now here's why. Because his hand withered, and the king said, all right. He said, now come on and come to my house, and let's have something to eat and something to drink. Notice this. Now follow me here. The man of God said to the king, if you'll give me half of your house, I will not go in with you. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. Why? For so it was what? Charged me by the word of the who? Lord. The Lord, saying, eat no bread nor drink water nor return by the same way that you came. Now who told him not to do that? The New English says, the Lord gave me strict orders. The Amplified Bible says I was commanded by the word of the Lord. So did he know he had been commanded not to eat or drink in that place? Okay, now look at verse 11. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel. And his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel, the words he had spoken to the king. Them told they also to their father. Verse 12. And their father said... What way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said to his sons, Saddle the donkey. So they saddled him the donkey, and he rode thereon. And he went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, Are you the man of God that came from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said to him, Come home with me and eat bread. Now watch. And he said, I may not return with you nor go in with you, neither will I eat bread or drink water in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, you shall eat no bread nor drink water there, nor return to go by the way that you came. Verse 18, and he said, now wait a minute, we're going to read this, but hang on. Did he know? Yes. Did the Lord tell him? Yes. Don't do it. We've seen him say that four times now. He said to the, to the king, I can't because the Lord said. And then he said here, I can't because the Lord said. Oh, but the old man said, I'm a prophet as you are. And an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, saying, bring him back with you into your house that he may eat bread and drink water. Look at this phrase. But he lied to him. Mm, look at verse 19. So he went back with him. Say, what? Now see, on the surface, this sounds simple. He went back with him after having strict orders not to go. Verse 20. And it came to pass, they said at the table, the word of the Lord did come to that old prophet. That brought him back. Now wait, let's, let's clear something up. Was God trying to kill this guy? Was God mad at this young prophet? Did he have a hit out on him? Right? He had sent him with a word of the Lord. The sign had come to pass that he said. But what is incumbent upon him? Show regard and honor for what God told you to do. Verse 21. And he cried to the man of God that came from Judah and said, Thus says the Lord. Now here's where the argument comes in. People will always, and here's where the, 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 the issue, the discussion always comes up. How can this old man who lied, how can he hear from God? Well, that's not a big thing. I, I remember when I was running from the Lord sitting in the bar. I knew the voice of the Lord. I knew I wasn't supposed to be there. Amen. And there are times people would start asking questions about the word and asking things, and I'd feel the anointing come on me. But you were in the bar, and? The gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. It wasn't right. I wasn't right being in the bar. I was disregarding the Lord's commands. But here's where people get stuck. For as much as you have, look what the Lord said, you have disobeyed the mouth of the Lord 
and have not kept the commandment which the Lord your God commanded you. Now, we're not going to go into all this, but you remember he died. And this, but this is where people always argue. Let, let me help you clear this up, can I? This prophet said he'd received a word from the Lord. He lied. He didn't. The Bible tells us that. Secondly, this young prophet knew God's voice. He knew. What should he have done? Stayed with what he knew God said. See, this man said, but I heard from God. Never allow what someone said, God said to them about you, to move you away from what you know God said to you. I've had people do that. Well, this is what the Lord's telling me. Wait a minute, that goes against what the Lord told me. So I'm not going to do it. And I had to learn over the years to answer that quickly. Don't let that stand. Somebody says something that you know is not right, say it. Because you know, if, if you know the voice of the Lord. This man, listen, this, this, this can move you into dishonor. You never make a decision based on what somebody told you. That's not how we're led in the New Testament. We're led by the inward witness. We're led by the Holy Spirit in our spirit. God will give you a confirmation or a confirming word, but you're not led by a word from me or a word from anybody. You're not led by dial a prophet. You're, not, you're led by the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people get into problems and they'll say, well, I know what the Lord said, but then I talked to so-and-so. Wait a minute. When you know what God said, confer no more with flesh and blood. I know this is what God told me. You can confide in somebody you trust in. This man knew the voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. And you know what else? This man really died. And we need to see why. Because he just disregarded what God said. Do you know why there's a speed limit on the highway? To keep you safe. I mean, folks, you watch how them nuts drive in, under the speed limit. Now, if you one of them nuts, I'm not mad at you. I'm, I was watching a car come up behind me the other day, and all of a sudden they swerved over on this shoulder and back over on this shoulder, texting. I was driving down 87th Street one day, and a guy came over and was running me off the road, and I got up beside him, and he had his iPad out. And I laid on my horn, I was like, he got mad at me and gave me the salute. He about ran me off the road. Dishonor. But my point is, why is it there? Why is that limit there? To keep you safe. Very often, what we need to see is this. If the young prophet would have respected and did what God told him, he would have never been at that house. He would have never met the lion in the road. They killed him. But instead of saying, no, this is what God said, he listened to another guy say, but the Lord told me. I've had people say about me, well, he don't care what I, he don't care what I said. He don't think I heard from God. You didn't. If it goes against what God told me, you didn't hear from God. So just get happy back in the same pants you got upset in. Because <laughs> I'm not mad at nobody. You just, we've all missed it. 
And I've had people say, you don't think I hear from God. Now, I didn't say you didn't hear from God. You didn't hear from God on that. See, I'm not, I'm not going to have no lion meet me in the way. Th those that honor God, God will honor. I want everything that He wants to bring into my life. I want everything that He wants to bring into my ministry. I want the ministry to mean something to Him. Do you understand that? I, I want God, when He looks at my marriage, to say, boy, that's the kind of marriage I want everybody to have. When, when God looks at my family, I want Him to look and say, that's the kind of family that I want everybody to have. Listen, if you're a minister in here, you ought to be the most honorable person because the Bible says we're examples to the flock. I promise you, I swear to the Lord my Savior, I swear, you will never have to worry about seeing me coming out of an R-rated movie. You'll never have to worry about me looking at something on the internet I shouldn't be looking at. You'll never have to worry about me going off with any other woman than the one I got. She's stuck with me. Amen. If she said tomorrow I'm leaving, I'd get my coat and say, where are we going? <laughs> Let me grab my hat. Amen. <laughs> now, one time early on in our marriage, uh, we, 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 we decided we were never going to, if she's home, we're never going to sleep apart. Not going to be angry and sleep apart. The worst thing you can do. And uh, one night, we, we had kind of disagreed, and she decided she was going to go sleep on the couch. I just got my blanket and went in and laid down on the floor. Reached up and grabbed a hold of her hand. She said, what are you doing? And then she looked at me and said, you can't even stay mad at you. I, I'm, I'm not bragging on me. I'm just saying I want, I want God to look and say, that boy did everything that he could do to honor me with his life. When, when I stand before God, I'm not going to hear, I never approved of you. I'm going to hear, enter into the joy that awaits you because of the honor that you walked in while you were on that earth. I can't expect to be perfect, but I can expect to be honorable. Do, do you see that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He messed up when he chose to disrespect what he knew God told him. When you, when you know to do right and you don't do it, that's where the problem comes in. Amen. Now, very quickly, we're, we're moving quickly. Look at Matthew 16. Say it out loud. Say, Lord, Lord teach, me teach me how to honor you more. So that's, what, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm pressing into. Matthew chapter 16, verse 21. From that time forth began Jesus to show his disciples how he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Verse 22. Then Peter took him and begin to rebuke him, saying, notice, Lord, this shall not be unto you. Now, here's some things to see. First of all, Peter loved Jesus. He loved him. He was, uh, his remarks came out of sincerity and love. He, he, he didn't want to see somebody he loved suffer that way. But listen, it's not enough to be sincere. It's not enough to be loving. Because love can lead in the wrong direction. Unless it's combined with understanding. Look at, look at Philippians 1, 9. Philippians chapter 1, verse 9. And we're, we're going to come back to Matthew 16. But Philippians chapter 1 and verse 9. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more. Notice how it's going to abound. In knowledge and in all judgment. Judgment here means, it means a perception or a depth of insight. Let me use this example. I've known parents who loved their children, yet had no perception or insight. And they allowed that child to be disrespectful with no consequences. And they said, well, I love them. 
but they had no judgment. Like the couple that time that, that had decided they were going to raise their child with no discipline. And it was evident. They, they were never going to tell him no. Well, they didn't. And it was evident. Now, what was that decision made out of? What they thought was love. It was a very bad decision. Amen. I've had people, I've, I've watched people that grew up and got into all sorts of trouble. And they, and they say, my parents never told me no growing up. <laughs> and then when somebody tells them no, they go the other direction. So Peter loved Jesus, but he had no discernment. He had no perception. Look here at verse 23, Matthew 16, verse 23. But he, Jesus, turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. Do you see that? The Weast Bible says, He with his back turned to Peter and Satan. Said to Peter, Be gone under my authority get, and keep going behind me out of my sight, Satan. A stumbling block you are to me because you do not have a mind for the things of God, but for the things of men. Now, this was a razor-sharp, immediate rebuke. Immediate. Amen. Why? Well, let me ask you a question. What if the young prophet would have answered this way? When the old prophet said, you need to come back to my house, the Lord said, what if he would have said, no, he didn't. I rebuked that. I know what he said. Let me tell you, he would have lived out his days. Jesus refused for even a moment to enter into disrespect by entertaining a thought of doing something against the will of the Father. Over and over again, he said, this is why I came to the earth. My meat is to do the will of him that sent me. Over and over and over and over again. Well, who was influencing Peter? You can say it, the devil, Satan. I've heard preachers sugarcoat this. Well, he wasn't talking to Peter. Yes, he was. The Bible says he turned to Peter and said, you're an offense to me. <laughs> because you're not thinking about the things of God. You're thinking about how you're going to feel when I die. And you're missing the whole point. Peter's trying to talk Jesus out of being his redemption. I'm hurrying now. Bear with me. So who's the ultimate influence today that's trying to get people to disrespect what God said? You know, it's not God telling people they need to pray less. It's, it's not God telling people that, you know, it's, it's okay to have two beers with dinner, just don't have three. There are people under the sound of my voice. <laughs> if you went to a church that said it was okay to have a beer with your dinner, you'd be right back in the same state you were when you got saved. Maybe worse. But because you come somewhere that says we don't play in the same sandbox with the world, Amen. Amen. You got to watch playing in the world sandbox. You get gifts. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> got to watch it. See, Satan is the influence behind that. Now, what caused this mindset in Jesus? Look at John 10, 30. This is my last verse. John chapter 10 and verse 30. It is okay that we use a lot of scripture around here, right? John chapter 10 and verse 30. Whether you know it or not today, we've used 13 of them. So, hallelujah. And I've even heard people say about that, well, you know, the use of too much scripture it, it confuses people. <laughs> I thought the Bible said the entrance of his word gives light. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Notice what he said. I and my Father are one. Now this is so interesting because the, the we says I and my Father are one in essence. Now wh- why is that important? Because when Jesus said I and my Father are one in essence, that word essence, when you look it up in the Greek, it literally says essence. It means one in attributes, one in design, one in will, one in work. See, Jesus and the Father are two separate individuals. There are three in the Godhead. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That is, that is a fundamental truth of the church. So when Jesus used the word one, he didn't mean one person, he meant one thing. We have the same thing in common. We have the same mission. We, we have the same thoughts. We have the same attributes. We have the same goal. So the work of the Father and the way the Father wanted the work done was the foremost in Jesus' mind. Because when you keep God and His things first place, it keeps us out of disrespect. You know, I've told men over the years, and I'm going to close with this. You need to worry less. Now, when I say this, especially ladies, hang on, I'm going to qualify it. You need to worry less about what your wife thinks about what you're watching and more about what God thinks. Because I'm just going to tell you, young, old, whatever it is, you, you start, listen, you start going down that road of pornography, that's idolatry. That's worshiping at the altar of another God. And I'm just going to tell you plain, and you do whatever you want to do with it. If you've got to hide it, delete it, scrub it, clean it, or otherwise cover it up, it's cheating. Yeah, but I didn't do anything. Then ask your wife if it's okay if you bring a couple of models over to the house. And, 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 you know, they disrobe for the sake of mixed company and just lay around the house with nothing on and all you're doing is looking. Ask her if that's okay. Ladies, is that all right? Wives, is that okay? You, you good with that? No. no, of course not. You got to watch that. I said you got to watch that. God takes a dim view of that. I lost my crowd, but it's okay. You, you got to watch that. I, I don't care if you're even just being tempted with it. I don't, I don't, I don't. You got to make a resolute decision. Not doing that. I'm not thinking that way. I'm not going down that that dishonors God. Because if I don't learn to honor God with all my actions, I'll never be able to honor the people in my life that God's brought me. I cannot honor my wife the right way if I'm not honoring God the right way. My attitude, my verbiage, my words, my conversation, the way I talk to my wife is a direct, a direct Example of the way I do things where God's concerned. Amen. But we're going to honor God. Say it out loud. Say, Lord, show me, teach me, reveal to me how to honor you more (laughs) in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Do you see that? Now, now you've stuck with me on how to walk in dishonor. Now we get to start moving into the rewards of walking in honor. But see, we've got to see these things. We've seen over and over again, people really died. We've seen why they really died. And why is that? It's, it's an example of what to stay out of, what to not do. Amen.
Now, beginning next Sunday, we'll start seeing what we can do to receive that honor and receive the reward that God wants for us to have. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Stand up tonight, today. Praise God. Now, please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I don't believe that I have a church of, of men or women that, that is running around wanting to sin. I'm just, I'm just saying, in any group of people that you deal with, any time a group of people, I mean, this is a mass of people. I saw Billy Graham preaching one time, and he said people talk about preaching to the masses. He said, if you've got three people, that's a mass. If you've got ten people, that's a mass. It was a mass of people, mass of people that have gathered together. But any time you've got that, that, that group, there's a lot of times... God will bring you to church and God will bring you to hear something that, that has just been in thought form in your mind. Or a temptation by the enemy. And it keeps coming up. And God will bring you to church and you'll say, well, that's why that keeps coming up. Why that, that's why that keeps coming to be a part of my life. Now you've got ammunition to stop it. No, sir, I'm going to honor God. Amen. Do you believe that? I believe God. I believe God. So we'll be back tonight at 6 o'clock for things pertaining to the Spirit. Amen. And God's going to move. And we want to thank you, all of us, me and Lily, for all the gifts, right? All the toys and the cards and the, here you go, money. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, that's right. <laughs> Amen. I showed her that check for $100. She said, whoo. <laughs> Amen. I, no, she probably did. Obviously, she didn't know. But tell them, say, I'm one year old. One. Say one. I'm one. Did you say one? 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 Come on, kid. No? Okay. <laughs> one year old. So we thank you. We truly, from the bottom of our heart, we thank you so much for being such a blessing to our little baby girl. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So come on, we'll be back here at 6 o'clock tonight. Say it with me. The vision of our church will always be to build people's faith and frame their world by the Word of God. And you and I will always be world changers. God bless you.